In this lecture, we're going to talk about the periodic table of elements. Now, there are over 100 different types of elements or atoms found on Earth. That means we need a very good way of organizing all these elements. And the periodic table does just that. What it does is it organizes our elements or atoms into columns and rows. Now, the columns are known as groups or families, while the rows are called periods. So let's zoom in on our periodic table. So this is a general representation of our periodic table. I did not include the names of our atoms, and I also did not include the other elements usually found in two rows on the bottom. Now that's simply for simplification purposes. If you'd like to see the actual table, Google it or check out a chemistry textbook. Now these guys, these columns, are known as groups. So group 1, group 2, group 3, group 4, all the way up to group 18. While these rows are known as periods. So period 1, period 2, period 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to period 7. Now these guys, or this table, is divided into three main divisions. Known as metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Now the white squares, or the white elements, are known as metals and they're found from the left all the way up to this section here. Now, the orange guys are known as metalloids, while the red guys are known as nonmetals. Now, group 18 is called the noble gas group, while group 17, the group right next to group 18, are known as halogens. Now, this, these guys here, from this group to group number 3, are called transition metals. Group number one are known as alkali metals, and group number two are known as alkaline earth metals. Now we're going to go into more detail in our next lecture about what the alkaline, alkaline earth, noble, halogens, and transition metals are. In this lecture, we're only going to look at the three divisions that exist, namely metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. So let's zoom out. Now let's examine our divisions. Let's look at the metals. Metals are large atoms that tend to lose electrons with great ease, forming ions in which the oxidation state is positive. Now within a metal, electrons move with great ease from one point to another. And that means our metals are able to conduct electricity very well. So metals generally have high conductivity rates. Now metals are also malleable, which means you can hammer them into very thin strips. Examples include wires. Now, metals are also, or have, high ductility rates. In other words, they're stretchy or stretchable. Now, metals, whenever they form uh, compounds with oxygen, they form or bond non-covalently. They create ionic oxides. The one exception is beryllium. Beryllium bonds with oxygen covalently, and that's the only exception known. Now let's look at the second type of division, namely the nonmetals. Now nonmetals, which are found uh, on the right side of the table, the red guys, have very diverse chemical characteristics. And these guys form negative ions. They don't lose electrons very easily. In fact, they gain electrons more easily than metals. And that's why they form negative oxidation states. Now these guys, when they combine with oxygen, they form covalent oxides. Examples include carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. Now let's look at the third type of division called the metalloids. Metalloids are interesting in that they have characteristics of both metals and nonmetals. And these guys are found right here in the middle of our periodic table or more towards the mid-right. The orange guys are the metalloids.